California coastline, an inspiring stretch of beauty and tranquility. Now, in the new series, Chains of Love, a woman or man is chained to four members of the opposite sex 24 hours a day, and there is no escape. Witness the joy, the honesty. That was the most truthful thing I've heard you say. The competition, and the romantic connection. OK, we're putting in here, girls. Hang on left. In tonight's episode, a man is chained to four beautiful women. In his search for a match, he learns which of his chain mates is for real. So, Gina, your tattoo, let's see. I like that. Oh. Hi, I'm Madison Michelle. Welcome to Chains of Love. This week, John, a corporate attorney, will be moving into this beautiful house equipped with a gourmet kitchen, indoor-outdoor pools, stunning views, and a custom-built bed for five. As his chainmates, we have chosen four attractive women. Each girl represents attributes that John has said he finds appealing in a woman. I'm fairly successful and fairly comfortable. The dating scene is, is a challenging one. There's no end of lovely women here, but finding one that is sort of the keeper is a challenge. I'm sure he won't complain about being close to four different girls. I mean, what guy would? None that I know. <laughs> Sex is, is, is important. I think it's important, definitely. I just I feel like I haven't been having much sex lately. I am from a little small town. Sometimes I tend to be too nice. People automatically kind of stereotype you as you're not gonna have any wits about you. I like a guy that has a really nice butt, nice, firm, and very squeezable. <laughs> Great. John has not yet met any of the women. On the way to the house, he listens to poems each woman has written, hoping to make a memorable first impression. Strong desire, sleek physique, eyes bright in the night, escape me. Yeah, I'm definitely competitive. I like to go into a game and win. For them to have a bit of depth and a bit of intelligence is kind of a nice thing. To me, it's about a type of person who is worldly. I like someone who has an understanding of the world. I'm born and bred in New Zealand, so I'm a Kiwi. I will use my look sometimes when I know that it's gonna get me a hit or get me in somewhere. I need a guy who can be sarcastically witty. They've gotta be smart. Oh my God. Hi. Hi. How you, How you doing? doing? Good. Thank you. <laughs> Natalie. Hi, nice to meet you. Hi, nice to meet you too. A growling prance, a high piercing song, the dance of a black panther. I have no idea what he's gonna be like, so I'm just gonna play it cool and see what happens. A date who's, you know, really gorgeous and really funny is 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 totally fine. I think I'm pretty uh, fun and outgoing and I think I'm pretty whacked. <laughs> It's a heck of a lot easier to get along with men than girls. Other women have problems with me for some reason, and I haven't figured that out yet. I've been accused of being a huge flirt even toward women to get things that I want, and to me it's just, you know, just be me. <laughs> How you doing? I'm Kim. Kim? Danielle. Nice to meet you, Danielle. Natalie, hi. Natalie, hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I am soft and furry and love to run free. Look deep in my eyes. You will love what you see. I want the best for myself. Guys who want that also for themselves can see me and appreciate that. I sort of like women who maybe have a bit of um, ethnicity in them. I think it's because I'm Asian and I stand out. I'd like the guy I'm dating to be financially secure. Security is always good, you know, always reassuring. That's one less thing to worry about. Turn offs, men who expect things, I hate that. Basically, is she gonna put out? And if she doesn't, it's like, ah. Hi. You're Deanie? Yeah. I'm Danielle. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice I'm to meet Jeannie. you. Hi. I'm Kim. Hi, Kim. Hi, Kim. I'm Kim. Natalie. Kim. It's My. not raining. <laughs> the next four days is just gonna be like this or better. Okay? okay. Yes. We'll have fun anyway. <laughs> we'll, have fun anyway. Yeah. we'll have to sing that song, Rain, Rain, Go Away. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> hey, everyone. Hi. 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 How's it going? I'm John. Hi, John. Hi. Hi. John. 
Hi. Hey. It's a highly anticipated hey. moment. Hey, how you doing? Kim, huh? nice to meet you. Kim, how are you? Good. Natalie, nice to meet you. Natalie, Hi. okay, very nice to meet you. Hi, I'm Jeannie. Jeannie, nice how are you? Danielle. Danielle, okay, Danielle, Jeannie. Natalie. Oh my God, Natalie, Natalie and Kim. Okay. Yeah. Well, a distant bell summons the group into the ritual room where the chaining ceremony will begin. In a few minutes, you will all be chained together, and you will remain that way 24 hours a day for several days. John, there will be certain times when you will need to decide which one of these women you want to release and send away from the chain. You will know when those times come when you meet the locksmith. The locksmith carries a key to your chains and a box containing $10,000 cash. John, that money belongs to you. When you release a woman, you alone decide how much of the 10,000 to give her. Now, will you all stand? John, on the drive over here, you read four poems written to you by our lovely ladies. Which one was your favorite? The first one I read. And your second favorite? Second one was the second one I read. Okay, those were written for you by Danielle and Natalie. You guys wrote the best poems, so you get the best places. This is the order on the chain that you will pass the next several days and nights. And now the time has arrived. Remember, the next time you meet the locksmith, it will be time for the first woman to go. Good luck to all of you. As the group explores the house, they learn the difficulty of moving in chains. You guys go over there, we're going to go over there. Okay. Being chained together is going to require a great deal of teamwork so that people are not rolling downstairs. There's going to be no place to hide, and it's going to be really cool to see how it all plays out. We can take baths. During their time together, each member of the group will have the opportunity for privacy in the bathroom. Check it out. <laughs> exactly, girl. As our group adjusts to their new chains, they set off for their first activity outside the house. Who just touched my bum? <laughs> Your last significant boyfriend, what was the nickname he used most often? Bitch. Oh! <laughs> I just gave That's good. Okay. Right, left, 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 right, left. Hey, we're cutting in here, girls. Hang a left. <laughs> As the group sits down to lunch, we provided John with information about how each girl views her competition. Prior to coming to the house, you were shown videotape of six girls and asked to rate them compared to yourself. Okay. Now you will all find out what your competition thinks of you. Kim says about Natalie, great body, but not magnetically sexy. Definite competition. And about Jeannie, here's what Kim said. She's a nice looking girl, but too made up. <laughs> As for sexiness, Kim thought Jeannie to be average, and she seems a little hard. Kim thought she'd win out over Jeannie. Um, Maybe not now. So here's what Danielle has to say about uh -oh. each of you. About Kim, well-groomed, intelligent, love the accent. <laughs> Thanks. You're on. About Jeannie, a lot of makeup, <laughs> great teeth, Seems argumentative. I don't see any competition there. Here's what Natalie said about Danielle. Very pretty, a nine, tough competition. Thank you. <laughs> okay, about Jeannie, outspoken, but blah. She seems like she would push a guy's buttons. Pretty, but not a lot of competition. And finally, revenge for Jeannie. <laughs> Here's what she said about Natalie. An eight for looks and sexiness, seems open and honest. About Kim, a seven for looks. Girl next door type. About Danielle, eight across the board in looks, intelligence, and sexiness. Jeannie nice. also Jeannie also said, I can't stand narrow-minded people who criticize and judge others. That's God's department, not theirs. Very good. Very good. Very, good. Very, much. Very good. I can just brush it off and say I'm used to it, but yeah, it does bother me. It's just a slap in the face. Now I know that's how they think of me.
the women each disclosed what they had said about the other based upon what they had written in the book about Jeannie. I think the other three girls all came across as judgmental, so they each lost a notch. Throughout their time together, each member of the group has the opportunity to speak to us privately while others wear sound blocking headsets. I'm choked up about it because I go through this all the time. I said in, in the interview when I watched the tape that um, Jeannie wasn't competition because she's she's oriental, for one. I'm really tired about of defending myself or whatever. I sense a little competitiveness, a little cattiness, which you know makes this very fun to be perfectly honest. As the chain mates get ready to fix their first meal, they must learn to work together as a team. Kim, you're gonna be the sauce girl. Right. Danielle's gonna be the garlic girl. Uh, that's what I call a pepperoni pizza. John's a really cool guy. He seems easygoing. And he's kind of a, got a scruffy cuteness about him. <laughs> Behind you. I'm feeling it right here. You do 10 and then you look at it? Yes, I would go out with John if he had asked me out, you know, outside of here, yeah, with. We've actually overlooked a very significant portion of this meal. Divine? Exactly what I was thinking. He's definitely a nice looking guy. His personality definitely comes through. He's passionate about what he wants, and I like that. A good dancer is a good lover. A good dancer is a good lover? Kissing, too. The kiss, the kiss is key. If the kiss doesn't work, oh, nothing will work. With Danielle, I do see that she, um, she likes to be center of attention, and she likes to, you know, try and poke her way in and get John's attention over the other girl. Let me tell you what a bad kiss is first. One that just goes like this. <laughs> what if the guy knows how to kiss really well, but you're just not into him? Then it won't. Why would you kiss him? No, this is a very good point. It's a very good point. I knew a guy who was friends for nine years. My God. My God, could the man kiss? Is that what you're telling us? First off, I have to tell you that his brother kept doing this, like, rub my leg uh -huh. or whatever. One thing led to another, and my, my only threesome. <laughs> we'll drink to that right there. That's a good story. And I'll tell you, the, not, the bad kisser, off of bed. The awesome kisser, yeah. oh. <laughs> Danielle was a little controlling in conversations, yes. That was definitely an aspect of her nature. But if I wanted to get a word in, that wouldn't stop me. Uh, no, 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 let me finish, because you don't know what the question is. Oh. She is trying a little bit too hard in this situation. She's constantly making the first jump towards making an impression on, on John. Friends. Fun. Yeah. We're friends. <laughs> yeah, you have both your hands. I am. Kim was sort of my initial favorite. And I'm sensing that, you know, she's, I don't want to say she's playing sort of hard to get, but Kim is kind of hanging back. She's been kind of cool. I'm not going to push myself overly, overtly onto people. So my strategy is, again, just being subtle, but being cool and having a good time. After dinner, the gang is ready to unwind in the hot tub and get to know each other better. You see somebody's tattoo Ooh, over there. Somebody's got a tattoo. It's good. It's good. So, Gina, your tattoo, let's see. Come on. Yeah, let's see it. Carol, let's see. It's a little heart with the long stem rose. Oh, oh, cute. Uh, okay. I like that. Sorry. What? <laughs> what year? I have a tattoo. Oh, know. do you? Oh, it's a little more Got it in Hawaii. One, two, three. Wow. Oh. Oh, that's hot. Oh. I'm in a hot tub with four beautiful women. We're drinking wine. I basically can't go wrong. Have you ever been naked in front of strangers? I have been naked in front of strangers when I was in Hawaii. I have always had a desire just one time to strip in a nightclub. I just thought it would be exciting and fun, and I, I thought it would be neat just to be on stage and, and just get that experience. You know, I respect that. And you know what's really funny? Between all of us that's here tonight, I feel that John's type will be between Danielle and myself. Bitchiest thing you have ever done. She's thinking about it. I don't know. <laughs> oh, bull. You know what? Come on. You have something. Share with us. I don't know of any bitchy moments. I really don't. <laughs> I'm a pushover. Okay, He's really whoa. whoa. For Danielle to say, no, I have not been bitchy. I think I had a hard time swallowing that. You know what? Hold on one second. Kim, just be honest. If nothing turns you on about me, say nothing. Oh. If something turns you on, if it's like my very big biceps, then you can say your that. Your very big biceps turn me on. I would have to say it's your your quirky humor, your your nature. Right. I think anyone's still in the game. It's anybody's game until John decides what he wants to do. When was the last time you cried? I cry all the time, okay? I, the last time I cried was today because you guys said bad things about me. You know what? I knew that was oh, going to happen. Oh, that makes me so sad. And I was so angry I'm at that. So, I'm sorry. I'm, 
I'm very sensitive. I mean, I think with Jeannie, you know, there's there's definitely some issue going on there that I'm trying to kind of get my arms around. She's got some facade, some front that she's very preoccupied with presenting. Why do you think people misperceive you initially? Because they just don't know me and they just judge me based on my appearance. Maybe there's a gray cloud over my head. I don't know what it is. I'm like a perfectionist. Like Why? no matter Why are you a perfectionist? No matter what I do, I'm never satisfied, and I have to get everything perfect. I really felt like I didn't belong here. I'm like, just making the best of it. I still feel like, like, what am I doing here? That just made me into this person who, like, try, yeah, I take it very personally, and um, I try to make everything perfect, you know, personally, and um, I do feel Jeannie is emotionally unstable at this point in her life. I mean, you see, because. Like, a lot of people complain, right? But I'm um, like an action. I definitely feel like there's like something connecting happy. Jeannie and I between our past. There's something deep down that's not totally fulfilled, and I don't know if it's her upbringing or what, but there's definitely a big connection between she and I. But based upon the responses of these three women, the initial impression was negative. She's too made up, she's too this, she's too that. Not 100% so, negative. Well, no, 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 no. You can defend yourself, but the reality is the thrust she of what you said that was that she was, you know, primarily to made up. The hot tub was, you know, just kind of very powerful. We uncovered some very strong issues that each of them had, and um, we, we dealt with them, you know, as a group. Ah. You gotta make eye contact when you do a talk. Listen to that. Always. Always eye contact. These women frighten me, okay? I am frightened. One, two, three, four. I am frightened. Oh my god. Oh no, where are you to watch? <laughs> I was there minding my own business. Next thing I know, getting zapped with the evil eye from this beautiful girl. And, and then I've got her tongue down my throat. The girls are bonding with each other, and um, that's a great thing that's very healthy. I would cut Jeannie because she does have an emotional edge where she does bring down the group. Honestly, I had to choose. Oh, this kills me to say, but I would have Jeannie go first. The one who's the least interested in the game seems to be Jeannie. So I think John would choose to cut Jeannie because she's falling asleep. When the locksmith comes, I feel like I'm going to be the first person gonna be, who's going to be out of here. I kind of like how she opened herself up, and um, that was very powerful, and it was very, it was a good connection. Okay, get off. I'm certainly yeah. having a great time. I think it's every guy's fantasy. I don't want any monkey cool. business here, girls, all right? The locksmith's arrival indicates it's time for someone to be released. John has had less than 24 hours to decide who will be the first to go. Kim, Jeannie, Danielle, or Natalie. His chainmates have already fought, cried, made up, and made out. Once John releases the first woman, he'll have to decide how much of the $10,000 to give her. Now the time has come. John must make his first cut. This person, whom I'm going to release, is very interesting and creative. Uh, however, this person has also shown a manipulative side and has uh, been a bit too aggressive in wanting my attention. This person spoke over the other women a little too much for me. So the person that I'm going to release is you, Danielle. Okay, so Danielle, as we part, I'm gonna give you a portion of the money. I'm gonna give you $500. Uh, you can take this $500 and do two things. One, join a dating service. I'm sure there are a lot of nice guys out there. And two, um, buy a couple of bottles of something good, maybe Jägermeister you mentioned, and, um, and get drunk.
Daniel clearly emerged as the one that you know, would take control if given the opportunity. I think the remaining women should be on guard of John Swartz. The choice of words he uses are, to me, very vicious. I could see that it bothered her a bit and she was a little upset. By him saying that I uh, overspoke the other girls, I don't see that. We're so glad to get rid of her because she was just ruining everything. I don't understand why women call me a bitch. I don't understand that. I'm extremely nice. This morning when the locksmith came along, I actually had no idea who was gonna be the one to go. I mean, I was really thinking, okay, it could easily be me, then it turned out to be Danielle. Yeah, I was surprised because I felt like you guys um, got along pretty well. Uh -huh. But then again, I feel like she's too aggressive. At first I thought, okay, well, obviously she's gonna be the one who's gonna uh -huh. take over, and that's cool. Uh -huh. But then, you know, after a while, sometimes too much aggressiveness mm -hmm. is not what everybody wants. Exactly. So, you know. There's a bit of a change in the group dynamic already that I'm sensing in over breakfast. Kim was being a little bit more active in the conversation. So what about a guy who, like, first date, maybe second date, said, I want to take you out and buy you some pretty things. And he went out and he spends $1,000 buying you clothes. I wouldn't be complaining. I wouldn't complain sure. either. If he's a cool guy and he just does it because he's gregarious and he's got... Be nice, why why stop him? You know? Know? Why stop him? Yeah, right. just, you know, rich men see pretty young girls and they're like, hey, I want to buy you. I've let someone say, hey, here's a gift because I think you're nice and you're cool. Okay, thank you. I've allowed that to happen. If he just so happens to be rich and you, ha you happen to like him, then hey, more, more power. power to you. That's you know, cool, right. you lucked out. Today, I was really trying to get at how far they would let a relationship go if they weren't really into somebody, but that, that person had money. And to be honest, that, that was a turnoff for all three of them. With one less woman competing for John's attention, the remaining chainmates set sail on a deep sea fishing adventure. Right now, Kim has most of my attention. There's more possibility for Kim and I, I think, to interact, maybe on other levels. I just feel positive. Maybe a little more of me is going to come out. And the reason I kept Jeannie on has a lot to do, I think, with some stuff that we uncovered yesterday about her past. She's got some stuff to explore, and I think that makes her really interesting to me right now. Oh, look at this. I got the hooks ready and everything. We're out of bed. Now it's maybe about who am I more conversant with as opposed to a little kissy-kissy. After lunch, John surprises his chain mates with a pop quiz. First question, which weighs more, a pound of feathers or a pound of bricks? Okay, we have all the same, all the same. A pound of everything. It's a pound. It's a pound of everything. Oh. Okay, minus it's all the same. One, Sorry. Minus one for Natalie. Who is the vice president currently of the United States? Oh my God. And it looks like the playing field is leveling out a little bit here. How many inches are there in one yard? I use metrics. How many quarts are there in one gallon? Um, and the correct answer is four. And that's okay. No, hey, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, who is the author of War and Peace? Oh. Time is marching on. Leo Tolstoy wrote Tolstoy. War and Peace. Some months have 31 days. How many months have 28 days? Or two, or a question mark. The correct answer is all. A little oh, tricky. Right. It's a trick oh. question. And you know what? Like it's a trick question. question. Intelligence is important to John. I think maybe all three of us fell and are educated in certain subjects because he's a very intelligent person. And it looks like Jeannie has emerged by a hair. <laughs> they all sort of missed a whole bunch of questions that one would want to know. Oh, well, I only got four. Oh, well, oops. <laughs> Call me dumb. <laughs> I was really queasy on the boat. I couldn't handle it. The boat was rocking, and I'm like, oh, I was trying to hold myself in, and I couldn't. Take him, just hook it right under between the two eyes. Sorry. <coughs> she said she was going to lose it, and she kind of gave us all a warning. Fortunately for her, she didn't do it like on the deck of the boat. I felt really bad for her, but there's really nothing she can do in that situation. Oh, I don't feel good. That took her sort of out of pocket for pretty critical time until the very end uh, when she revived herself and did a little fishing with us. You ready to fish, Jeannie? Do you have some? Yeah, no. Go, woman. Oh my god, you got it, you got it, Jeannie. Reel it in, reel it in, reel it in. Watch. Yeah, she's got a half a fish. Come on. Dinner. Dinner. <laughs>
person who I'm going to release is clearly a lot of fun. However, I feel like this person and I never really connected. And on top of that, I feel maybe this person is, is more materialistic than would be attractive to me. The person I am going to release is Eugene. Based upon today's experience on the boat, I know you, you felt a little under the weather. And so what I'm gonna do is give to you $750, which will certainly go a long way to buying a lifetime supply of seasick pills. I decided to let Jeannie go today because we really just didn't connect. We had opportunities, it just wasn't happening. You could be the best looking girl, you could be the smartest girl. If there's no chemistry, there's no chemistry. I'd go as far as to say she's you know, a hardcore materialistic girl. I don't know where he gets the materialistic thing he brought up. She wasn't making enough effort to, to, to sort of get my attention. From the start, I felt like I didn't really click with anybody. Okay, so Natalie, truth or dare, do you like to be spanked? I do like to be spanked. Mm. I just, you know, sometimes I, I get these weirder to just to, yeah, just a little yeah. smack on the ass. Come on, sisters, let's kick it up. <laughs> okay, come on. Oh, you're right. Okay, ready? Now do a one. But you're just gonna have to be with me. One, two, three. Oh, oh baby! Nice. Woo! <laughs> sweet little innocent Natalie is not sweet little innocent Natalie, I think. We've all learned that whether or not this makes her the kind of girl I'm going to bring home to my mother, I'm not sure. When I drink too much, sometimes I get a little, little too aggressive. <laughs> I don't want him to think that I'm just about, you know, getting crazy and wild all the time because I'm not. I think we're all ready to go to bed, basically. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Cheers to good night. <laughs> I think John's at the point where he's really not sure. He wants his cake and eat it too. I think he's like, I want both of these girls. This is clearly an apples and oranges situation. And so I guess the question becomes, I need to decide which do I prefer, apples or oranges. Right now, I don't know. I would not like to be in John's situation right now. All right. Well, maybe for the night, but in the morning. <laughs> John and I slept closer together than, than Kim and John did. And I'm really not sure why, why that happened. It just kind of went that way. Oh, oh my God. That's a bad noise. That's a very bad noise. I'd get much more of a vibe with Natalie that there is something there. And Kim's approach is to sort of, you know, get a few steps ahead and, and run a little bit and see if I, uh, if I chase after her. Because of that, she's interesting to me. If um, I win the game and John does decide that he wants to pursue a relationship with me, I'm going to have to decline. Well, I think you need some mindset too. I'm not necessarily into him. I'm playing the game to win. <laughs> Absolutely. Now it's time to just play the game one step further. See what happens today. Wow, this is insane. <laughs> hey there. Good morning. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Good. John. In order to help you make your final decision today, we have created a couple of dates for you. Ladies, remember, if it's not your date, you will not be allowed to participate, and you will be like a third wheel. Sounds like a really fun day. I hope you enjoy yourself. Thank you. I think we will, yeah. To allow privacy during Kim's date, Natalie trails behind on a longer chain. I'm hoping that when Kim and I have our day today that we'll get a chance to interact more and, and see if there is any of that vibe that so far I'm still wondering about. What are the most romantic situations that you've ever been in? There's one that comes to mind. <laughs> 
being where we are. It was late at night, but the moon was out, it was really quiet, the lake was just, you know, still. And so we took the, um, the rowboat out. The way that I'm gonna, you know, make sure that I have a surefire chance of winning this game is just by getting even more connected. Like a fisherman, reeling him in. <laughs> if you were my boyfriend, would you let me take you around with a chain? I think it depends on where we were. I feel that Kim is huge competition for me, and I definitely noticed that he's getting a little bit more interested in Kim, and I'm a little worried about it. So are you on the cusp of being a bad boy? And I think I have been that way. Been a bad in boy? In the past. So. I don't know whether he senses what my game is, but he definitely seemed to be having fun, put it that way. This is cool. Oh, wow, look at that. <laughs> Never had a picnic chain to somebody. This has to go yeah, in the book I've, of firsts. I've never done one while being chained either. Men want what they can't have, I feel, and um, I think he's looking at it as a little bit of a challenge. One, two, three. So tell me now, to the brunt of it, what do you feel about the energy of this moment? I think it's good. I think for the first time that we've been together, it's kind of like, It's been downtime, because we're all alone. You know, as we started hanging out, I mean, I, I, like I said, became most, I think, engaged, you know, just you're the most interesting. And the kiss was very, very nice. I mean, she has very soft lips, and it was, it was a lovely kiss. It was like a kiss between friends. That's how I felt. I don't necessarily think that a kiss is going to help me to win the game, but I do think that certainly I made a good impression. If he were to choose right now, I think he'd definitely pick Kim. Tonight, I definitely feel that our date is going to be the determining factor on his final decision. Kim said she'd play John like a fisherman on her date, and he seemed to buy it hook, line, and sinker. My date with Kim was great. There was some kind of connecting going on, which was nice. Now it's up to Natalie to win back John's attention. Um, basically, my strategy tonight on our date will be to uh, just have a really good conversation with him and maybe flirt a little bit and see basically what his reaction is going to be to that. This is great. So tell me what you thought of today. I felt, I felt lonely. Yeah. yeah. I did. Did you have a great day today? Today was fun, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was definitely, you know, it was a lot of fun. What about you? You want kids one day? Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, and it's weird because a lot of my friends are married with, with kids now. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I, I look at it and I think, you know what, if I meet the right girl, then yeah. Exactly. But, but it's like, it's not, I'm not creating, you know, some pressure that, oh, my God, I need to do this today. You know, yeah. And, I think Natalie has some feelings for John more than I do. For me, it's more like, well, I don't really, but I can play and have a good time with it. So did you leave room for dessert? <laughs> Maybe a little bit. If John does decide to get a little more physical, definitely I will um, go with that. I just don't want to be the one always initiating that between he and I. I don't know who's going to win the game. It's very close. It's anybody's game right now. <laughs> <laughs> what is this right here? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that delicious? Mm. Then you can feed me dessert. I think Natalie may, if she's still, you know, in the point where she's like, yeah, I want to go for it, she may definitely get more aggressive. Is that too tight? No. How about now? Oh, maybe. Okay. There we go. OK, so why don't you feed me something? Mm. <laughs> you have to guess, like, very specifically what this is. OK. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm, strawberry dip and chocolate. Okay, now let me feed you. I think you'll like it. Mm. Are you ready? Yeah. Now what is it? Who cares what that was? <laughs> <laughs> and I think Natalie could get too aggressive, but if she pushes it further, um, it, it could get to a point where it's maybe a little bit of a turnoff. So how about we do body shots? Okay, I'm gonna do my shot now. Okay, girls, as you know, this is the moment of final judgment. Uh, before I make or announce my decision, I'm going to give each of you 10 seconds to explain to me why you should be the one who stays. Let's start with Natalie. 
I think that I should stay with you tonight because it's a perfect opportunity for you and I to take a hot tub by yourself underneath the full moon after midnight. Kim? The reason why I should be the one to stay is plain and simple. I'm the one. My decision has been made, and this person whom I'm going to release is someone I was initially very attracted to. However, this person is also someone I never really connected with romantically. And so, this person whom I'm going to release is you, Kim. And I have elected to give you $1,000, this money to perhaps go towards acting lessons, as you never fully had me convinced that you had a real interest in me. <laughs> Good choice. <laughs> Now let's finish our day. Mm, where did all that fruit go? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know for a fact that Kim was acting, and it was all just a big kind of game. Although, I mean, yeah, my gut, that's what my gut totally tells me. I think I knew I wasn't interested in John romantically two minutes after I met him. For a moment, I never thought Kim was, like, really into me. I wanted to give her that chance. I really was disappointed with the amount that John gave me. I think for the length of time that I was actually with him, I thought it was a cheap fail. And the fact that she got what she got, um, you know, that was more than zero, wasn't it? I think John's definitely playing the game. John's a smart cookie, and I think he's playing that. He's into Natalie, and he's playing along, because Natalie isn't there, but I have a feeling he could turn around and play coy and, and decide to keep the money. Your background and my background is definitely are much more similar than yeah, any of the other girls, I figured that. and especially Kim. I mean, totally different backgrounds. Yeah. And, um, but so I always sensed from the beginning there was this little connection between you and I. Yeah, mm. I did. It was more of a just a cool, mellow. Yeah, we're both kind of on the same level here. Mm. No matter how pretty they are and interesting they are, no matter how much Gucci they might wear. Or how cute their accent is. Exactly. But, you know, you're not going to, you don't want to hang out with them. Yeah. yeah. And that's why we're here together. That's exactly what we're here but, together. But, yeah, yeah, I guess, obviously. So cheers. Yeah, cheers to that. Cheers to you. Cheers to your choice. They're beautiful. Oh, it's so warm. Oh, it's so warm. Natalie is very beautiful. She's very sweet, and she has a curiosity about life. And she wants to learn, and she wants to experience things in life, and that makes her attractive to me. John and I do have a really pretty cool connection. He's the type of guy that I think um, I would definitely date. I think he's attractive and he's intelligent. Natalie and I have similar backgrounds, and you combine that with, you know, chocolate-covered bananas in the mouth, and it's like, there's no way I'm gonna say no to Natalie, and that's basically what happened. After the date, it definitely made a difference, more of an impact on me. I'm definitely interested in John now. Looks cozy, and it's only the two of us tonight. Finally. Hey. So with Natalie, I mean, I think there is the potential for it to blossom into something further. She was clearly the one that I liked the best. <laughs> It's the final day. John started this adventure chained to four women. Now only Natalie remains. Sure. <laughs> John is definitely an attractive guy, and he's the type of person that I would see myself dating, and I, I do feel a strong connection between he and I. John must now decide if he wants to pursue a relationship. If he does, he must split the remaining $7,750 evenly and for the first time surrender the power to Natalie. If Natalie also wishes to pursue a relationship, she will be waiting in the courtyard. However, if she does not, then she will be gone with the money and the locksmith will be waiting for John. And there's the peanut butter and the 
Where's the uh, where's the chocolate in the hood? <laughs> I know. The whipped cream. <laughs> With Natalie that night after dinner, we were having chocolates and the fruits and the whipped cream, and I mean it was it was it was very erotic. Just I mean, there's no doubt about it. It was there's a real chemistry between us. I was surprised last night when John showed me a sexual side. He was aggressive, but yet romantic, and not too overpowering, so it was really nice, but we definitely had a really good connection. Can you still Come on in. John, the time has come for you to unchain Natalie and yourself. I want to do this. <laughs> well done. I'll take this for you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Huh. <laughs> now that you're free of your chains, John, the time has come for you to tell Natalie your decision, whether or not you are interested in pursuing a relationship with her. Natalie, mm -hmm. the last four days have been insane. I mean, I really liked hanging out with you. We connected on, obviously, a physical level, mm -hmm. and we really have a lot in common also. Um, what I'm looking for in a serious relationship with someone is maybe someone who's a little further along and a little more experienced in life mm -hmm. and, and someone with whom I connect more mm -hmm. on an intellectual level. And so for those reasons, I'm choosing not to pursue a relationship okay. with you. John, you have $7,750 left. Have you decided how much money you would like to give Natalie? Natalie, I'm going to give you $3,000 because I do like you much more than any of the other women combined. And if by any chance you are just playing the game, then you are at least three times the actress that Kim was, and you deserve three times the money she got. Natalie, it's time for you to leave. I was really surprised with John's decision. I thought that he would definitely want to pursue a relationship with me. I was really upset. She's wonderful and she's very sweet. Where she is in life and where I am in life, you know, we're, I'm afraid that it just wouldn't be, it wouldn't work. John and I had a great date. It was perfect, it was romantic, it was sexual, and, and we definitely connected. If he really knew that I was interested in him, basically, he may have made a different decision. It kind of made me feel like he was in it just for the game, after all. I hope that she understands it was genuine, it was not a game for me at all. I, I hope that very much.